السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم أما بعد One time I gave a presentation uh, about Islam to non-Muslims and then uh, at the end uh, one of them came to me and he says you know what I love about Islam I said yeah go ahead he says uh, it's simplicity it's so simple I said explain preach to me he goes you know God is one that's it you're done I said that's exactly what it is it's simplicity. That's what makes Islam so attractive to many people because it's not, it's not a complex thing. You just understand and it's very, very logical. We see that in the organization of its theology and also its practice. And inshallah, I'm going to talk to you about the theology of Islam or in this case, what we call them the six articles of faith. Whenever you talk about the belief system in Islam, we divide that to six articles of faith so we can make it simple and easy to, to understand and follow. We believe in these six articles. Number one, that God is one and only one. Number two, we believe in the angels that he created, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to serve. Not that he needs them, but just to show, to show his superiority and his power, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, we talk, he, he sent messengers, uh, men, human beings, send them to us as guides. He sent with them books, number four, the books, the messages themselves, which is the same message to all humanity in terms of theology, in terms of aqidah and belief system, but maybe different practices. Also, we believe in the, uh, in the final day, and that's the, the, the judgment day. Everybody's going to be judged based on what they've done in this life. And the last one is what we call Al-Qadr, predestination. I want to elaborate a little bit more on these six articles. Number one, we believe in one and only one God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing like unto him. He doesn't look like his creation, and his creation can never reach even a, a level to be close to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No partners, no equals, absolutely nothing. He's one and only one. We believe in his oneness. We believe in his power of creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, all his beautiful action that resulted in, of course, in seeing what we see around us here. And we believe in his beautiful names and attributes by which he explains himself to us in the Quran and the Sunnah tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He's the most merciful. He's the most oft forgiving. He's the most powerful. He's subhanahu wa ta'ala, one and only. So that's the simple message about Allah Azza wa Jal. Therefore, if you believe in that, you need to direct all your active worship to him and only to him. Number two, the angels. Very special creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created them from a superior light. This creation has no specific gender. And they have superpowers that are way beyond our imagination. Because this creation, we can't see it with our own eyes yet. Until, of course, the day of judgment. So they are very subtle uh, spiritual beings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created for a specific mission. And they are, in terms of numbers, there's absolute, you can't even count them. Every single day Allah creates more and more of these angels and they go all around this, this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve certain missions and many of them, they, uh, they're, they're dedicated only to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah described them, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم They never disobey Allah azza wa jal ويفعلون ما يؤمرون and they do whatever being commanded to do. So these angels always worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, the messengers. These messengers are human beings. They are men that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to, to mankind over the history of mankind. At every generation, they received some messengers and prophets. And their, their, uh, their mission was to call people to back, back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship Allah azza wa jal. All the messengers and the prophet throughout the history of mankind, they preached the same message, which is to worship Allah and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Including Isa, Jesus, the, the, the son of Mary. He was a great messenger of Allah. It was a miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created without a father, but he was just a great messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all preached the same message. In regards to the practice, now that is different because it depends on the time and the culture of their time and the tradition of their time. So they had different practices, but overall believe in the same message. Number, three, number, number four, uh, the, the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent with these messengers. Every uh, messenger, not necessarily a prophet, was sent with, uh, uh, with probably with a script. Some of it was a written script, others were not. But overall, they had books. Some of them was the Torah of Moses, the Injil uh, and Gospel of, of Isa, Jesus, and also the Quran of the, uh, that was sent to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as being the final message of Allah. They have the exact same beautiful teachings to uh, uh, improve the quality of life of mankind and humanity. Then we have number five, we have uh, the Day of Judgment. As Muslims, we believe that this life is just a temporary one. The one that is eternal is yet to come after death. So we believe that death is not the end of real life, it's just only the, the end of this particular life, which is the life of this world. 
people after they die, they're going to meet their Lord at some point called the Day of Judgment when uh, they stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will be judged based on their own deeds. So, uh, what's the concept of salvation in Islam? So simple. The concept of salvation is that you need to have faith and you need to work upon this faith. Good deeds. That's it. Believe in Allah, in one and only one, and then prove it through good deeds. And at the end, you're going to be judged based on that. Obviously, everybody is under the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we do our good deeds in hope that we will earn the grace and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to go into paradise. Otherwise, people will be punished you know, in the fire of hell. May Allah protect us from the Sayyid Rabbil Alameen. And the last one is predestination, al-qada'u al-qadar. As Muslims, we believe that everything in this world happens by His will. But what does that exactly mean? Uh, including evil happens by His will? Yes, just because He wills it to happen, it doesn't mean He loves it. It's only put there for us as part of the test. So He created everything, He allowed everything to happen, the good and the bad and the ugly. But then He sent us prophets and messengers and guides and gave us intellect and free will in order to choose for ourselves to stay away from troubles and go and follow the path of goodness and righteousness, which he sent through, of course, the messengers of God. So we have the free will, but nothing in this world happened without his permission. Therefore, whatever happens, if it was against uh, uh, your desires and your wills, just submit to his will, and hopefully you'll get the best out of it in this world and the hereafter. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is Jasper Burjaz from Valley Ranch Islamic Center. If you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed what you just watched, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share the khair with everybody. Assalamu alaikum.